Hey, this is John Carlos. And the Hot Toys of Iron Man 3, Tony Stark the Mechanic, is currently available at Corner Store Comics. Um, Corner Store Comics will be changing its name pretty soon online. They're launching a new online toy store called It Figures Toys and More. So uh, keep a lookout for that. But uh, till then, yeah, the Mechanic, let's go check it out. So here's a look at the packaging, which features a similar style to the other Iron Man 3 Hot Toys figures. Although they do feature different colors, they all have the same kind of layout as far as like the wording and character name and placement and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the little things I like about this uh, packaging, you can see there, is that there's like this reflective, uh, like, computery chip type reflective stuff on there. And uh, I dig that. It's a nice little touch. So here's an inside look at the little sheet. It says, I am Iron Man. That's where he's got all of the uh, stuff he's working on building laid out. And then we'll take a look at, I think we'll take a look at the accessories first. And then we'll see how all those accessories fit onto the figure. But before we get to the accessories, I thought I'd give you a better look at uh, how everything is packaged inside here, including the uh, accessories that are on the back of this section and that his little backpack is underneath there. Now for a figure that's essentially just a guy in jeans and a hoodie, he comes with a lot of accessories, including left and right trigger finger hands and a left grip hand. Speaking of hands, he also comes with the magic changing electro hand. Now I call it magic changing because in the movie when you see him making it, it's clearly a left-handed glove and then later in the movie it's magically a right-handed glove. Uh, but this uh, accessory has a lot of really cool details. All this wiring on it is really well done. I love the paint and the tiny sculpting on these doodads at the end. And just the texture of this, even though like it's you know plastic and paint, it's, it's, it definitely looks like that uh, you know rough material glove. I think this is a really, really cool accessory. Now there's also this alternative arm where you will pop off the figure's arm and attach this piece to it. And uh, I think it's really cool. I like that... Like previous figures, it's got the magnetic part, so it can pop on and off easy. Uh, and when you attach it, I recommend just attaching this part. That way you don't put too much pressure on this kind of brittle plastic. Now this piece here and the hand and the wrist part pop off. So you can have his hand in the up firing position. So there is this alternate hand piece that you can use. There's also a left foot, and this comes in two pieces. You'll pop off his shoe. I'll show you how to do that. Here's his left foot, and I like all the little details on his uh, shoe here with like the metal and the wiring and all that stuff. I think it looks really cool. And there's like some battle damage there a little bit. Now there's this little homemade nail gun thing, and I feel like a broken record here, but I like the detail, I like the paint. It's a really cool item. And there's also this gun. As usual, it's got a lot of fun little like Hot Toys details. You know, that comes out. You can see the little bullet there. Now, also, there is this backpack. Looks really good. I mean, it certainly looks like a real backpack. It's even got one of these little clips, and it totally looks like they just took a backpack and then shrunk it. Because Hot Toys is good at stuff like that. And it comes with a bunch of accessories that you attach to that, which we will now take a look at. These are all tiny accessories. <laughs> Before you put anything on the backpack, he comes with his little Dora the Explorer watch. Although, uh, presumably for licensing reasons, uh, it comes with this little sticker sheet that's not Door the Explorer. It's uh, a little flower thing. What's cool is they give you these little spare uh, stickers that you can put on. Because chances are you might screw it up. And Hot Toys knows that this is little and that people might mess up. It even has a little tiny silver paint on it, so I like that. This is cool. I like that they included the spares. Now the backpack can include this little tiny itty bitty newspaper. I like when Hot Toys prints little tiny things. I think it's cool and impressive. That will slide into his backpack along with this like syringe plunger red fluid stuff. And his Christmas ornament bomb. This little doodad. This actually opens and functions. Well, not functions, but it opens up. So that's pretty impressive to me how tiny this is. You've got this little uh, dingus on a string. 
And lastly, you've got this little piece here. This is, I, pr I presume, when you uh, open up the uh, shirt to turn on his arc reactor chest. This is to help you tuck his shirt back into his pants. Oh, I almost forgot. There is more. That was not lastly. There's his sunglasses. And then the little one-two combo. This is his little uh, headpiece reader thing that, you know, that these pieces attach you know, on top of his forehead. And uh, this wraps around the rest of his head when he's controlling the suit, when he's not wearing the suit. Next we'll focus on the figure's outfit and uh, any articulation issues. As usual, I'm impressed with Hot Toy shoes. Uh, they certainly look like rubbery tennis shoes, and I think they did a great job with these textures. Um, here's a little closer look at the paint for like the laces and the, the details on these shoes. Uh, and then here's his pants. Fairly straightforward, decent stitching, nothing to complain about. Uh, the hoodie, well, let's say it looks like a hoodie. Uh, it certainly has that right material, and it's all very well tailored. Um, again, that's a very like, basic outfit. There's not a whole lot to say about it. I mean, there's nothing to really blow you away, but it is all very well done. Uh, something that is kind of impressive, though, is the fact that it actually zips and unzips. That kind of blows my mind a little bit. And then underneath, you can see he's got the... Uh, AIM t-shirt, and he's got this sort of plastic material protecting the uh, front of his shirt. I presume that might be because they don't want the black hoodie to uh, stain the shirt. That's my only guess. Actually, I took that plastic off, and uh, what I really think it's for is, uh, and you find this with, with sometimes with hoodies in real life, the, uh, the, the inner like cottony material of the hoodie can sometimes leave fuzz and since it's a white shirt you know there will be fuzz sticking to it now here is the on off switch for the arc reactor and sure enough when I took the uh, the plastic like off the uh, the chest of the shirt there was a like, little black lint fuzz so also know that there is a piece of plastic that lines his chest underneath his shirt that you'll need to remove. Uh, and I think it's really cool they gave you this little stick doodad because you will, in fact, need to tuck in his shirt after you turn on his arc reactor. But let's take a look at this head sculpt. Uh, this is the same head sculpt that was used for the uh, previous Iron Man 3 Tony Stark, like, uh, you know, suit test figure. But uh, they've updated the, the paint on it. Um, considering that, you know, it's the same Tony Stark through the whole movie, it makes sense for him to reuse the head. But uh, I think they did a really great job on painting this. So it, uh, you know, they're getting the most out of their Robert Downey Jr. likeness. I'll tell you that. Um, the stubbling on here is really cool looking, and I don't just mean like his little goat line. I mean like the paint along his cheek, just for that stubble, looks really good. I mean, obviously his facial hair, like the mustache and the uh, soul patch and all that, look fine. But again, that, that like light stubbling looks awesome. But uh, I'm really liking the, the blood around the eye. And the different uses of red to create different like saturation points of blood. You know, the likeness itself is a good likeness. I mean, if you like the previous one, it's, you know, the same one. But uh, the cuts on the face are all really, really good. And again, the glassiness of the eyes gives a very realistic look. Um, you know, if I only had one nitpick, it'd be just how dark that line in the middle of his lips are. It's a little too dark for my tastes, but uh, the hair is very well, well sculpted. They did a good job representing his hairstyle. And uh, overall, I'm really happy with how this figure turned out as far as the head sculpt goes and as far as the paint goes. I'd just like to add that I think it's absolutely insane that this thing actually like works and functions with an actual zipper like a hoodie. That's just really impressive to me. Now, I think this also unzips. Yep. And that's also impressive to me. And we will show a little patience in pulling off his arm. Now, I recommend you just take the nub, pop the nub in, <laughs> nub in, and there you go. Attach the magnetic piece, and there's his 
other hand. And just for uh, while we're at it, take the hand off, take the wrist piece off, attach the uh, alternate wrist piece. It's a little tight. Not so tight that it doesn't go on, but tighter than I'm used to. And there's the other hand. Pull the little tab off of uh, here and you get the light up feature. There you go. Well, that came off easily. Um, I don't have tweezers or pliers on me, but uh, I recommend that you kind of pin the uh, pants around the leg a little bit to ease putting this on. Uh, but you might want some pliers to help kind of pull the excess bagginess that I've got up there through the jeans. I mean, through the leg. Lift that piece up and hope, oh, lift that piece back. And uh, hopefully I can attach this without too much difficulty. Ah, ha, ha. And there we go. That wasn't so bad. All right, I'm going to attempt to go over all this stuff and how it goes on to this backpack. Um, hopefully this newspaper threads through all right. It's pretty thin. Uh, the slots are kind of thin. So it may, yeah, it may take some effort to get all of the uh, papers to slide through. It's not hard, it just, again, you have to be a patient person. But let's just cheat and do those three. All right, this slides underneath the uh, elastic straps that go across here. Just careful not to get it caught onto that big strap underneath. Uh, this is supposed to go underneath one of these however uh, this kind of pulls on the material a bit which kind of makes this tighter to put in but if that's not there then it slides right on in and then the rest of this rope tucks into the uh, the zipper here which, yep, does open. So you can tuck that in there. I don't think I'm going to fully assemble all this stuff. I'm just going to show you the basics of it. There's a little Velcro strap that you undo, and then you can put this in and have it sort of hang out a little bit. It kind of pops its way in there, and you can put the Velcro strap back on. Uh, lastly, there's a little uh, rope on the side of here and it just says that you're supposed to tie this through um, I it fits through easily I'm just currently not in the mood to make a little knot out of this but there's all the stuff and also just be aware that this does open up if you're not too careful with it now I didn't put on the sticker for the watch because well I'm feeling kind of lazy and it's just seemed like something tedious that I don't feel like doing right now and I'm barely gonna notice that there's a little white face on it. Uh, one other little thing that's pretty cool this backpack actually does unclip so you can put it around him. Just want to show you guys how he looks when you pop on his sunglasses which fit uh, you pull it over the ear a bit and it gets a little tight on the face and I'd say it looks pretty damn good. Then this piece pops on over his face. And, uh, but to complete the effect the way it works in the movie, you put this section over it. Now, makes me nervous that, uh, this might snap, but, uh, it is quite flexible as plastic. It's not nearly as brittle as it looks. Although the underpiece slides around a lot, so hey, there we go. That took a little bit of time, but uh, the effect is really cool looking. Now, as I'm getting ready to pose this guy for you, I just want to take a time to show you that uh, I had zero problem with the leg articulation at all. Torso's great, right arm, both the uh, 
the little nubbin arm and the regular right arm have great elbow articulation, but this left arm uh, just man, this left arm does not want to bend. It's very tight at the elbow. So tight that uh, I've tried several times and I'm just afraid. Uh, so maybe if you want to get like a blow dryer, maybe soften the plastic and see if that does something. I don't know if any of you guys have this problem. If you have it out there, let me know in the comments if you do. But yeah, I'm just having a hard time bending this. And uh, you can't get his arms to raise that high. I'm getting a little resistance. Not too much, but uh, but once it's up, I can't swing it that far forward to the left or right. Um, bringing it up is a bit of a challenge from the down to the up position. But other than that, it's pretty cool. So here's the figure on the basic Hot Toys figure stand with the Iron Man 3 logo on it. Here's a quick shot of the figure in some darker lighting. I think Hot Toys did a good job of taking a figure that's essentially just a dude in jeans and a hoodie and making him a worthwhile collectible. At least if you're a Tony Stark fan, this is certainly a worthwhile collectible. Because it is like from a, one of the cooler sequences from the, uh, the movie. And I like that you can not only just recreate his uh, entrance into the Mandarin's compound, but you know they give you the, uh, the other pieces of the Iron Man suit for his escape from the compound. Uh, if, you're, if you like Tony Stark, you like Iron Man 3, I think this is a pretty satisfactory figure. I mean, Hot Toys prices have gone up considerably in the last year and a half or so, but uh, I think this is kind of worth it if, one, if you're really into like Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., and Iron Man 3, uh, it comes with enough accessories that I could uh, almost justify the price. Thanks for watching.